Hi, everyone. I'm Heather Podoska, star maker to entrepreneurs who want to unlock their potential and command any stage. Welcome Heavy to enough. Thrive, the show where I bring you tips, resources, and people to help you create a more abundant life and business. You are in for high-value content coming to you from industry leaders who are growing their business, making an impact, and rocking their brands. Welcome to the show. Here we go. Hi everyone, I'm Heather Podoska, founder of the Brand Star Academy, where I teach entrepreneurs how to be powerful, profitable speakers and create their own celebrity personal brands. Welcome to this episode of Thrive, how to create your star brand and lead your industry with your special guest, Heather Podoska. Yes, this episode is an interview of me. I thought it might be a fun idea to do a switcheroony and change chairs and be the interviewee instead of the interviewer. I've done over 60 episodes so far of Thrive and the majority of those episodes have been me interviewing experts, thought leaders, best-selling authors, entrepreneurs, and people who really have a story and a message that I think will help my audience and make an impact to make the world a better place. And it's been this great resource for me as I've listened to my guests and hopefully hopefully for you. But I was also thinking, you know, I wonder if my audience is wondering more about who the person is that's doing all this interviewing. Who am I? What do I do? How do I serve my clients? And what's my story anyway? Who am I? How did I get here? So I thought it would be a fun experiment for this, you know, ending up the year, winding up the year to do an interview where somebody interviewed me. And luckily for me, I have a phenomenal friend who is a professional MC and host. Her name is Kim Miles. She's been on Thrive before as a guest and she has her own production company called Miles and Heels. She's interviewed celebrities. She's gone to corporations and universities and hosted events as an MC and as a host and is a, a performer herself. She's a singer as well. So I said, of course, Kim has to be the person to interview me. And I was, it was such a great joy to have her. And hopefully, I, when, I hope it comes across that we were having so much fun in this interview and we talked about how did I get here? What What is my story? How did I go from being an opera singer to a brand strategist? And then we went deep into what is brand? What does it mean to brand yourself? Why is it important to brand yourself? What are some of the common mistakes that people make? Should you go deep and narrow or should you diversify? What are my thoughts and feelings about that? What are the risks and benefits? So everything that we talked about had to do with how you can create a more powerful authentic profitable brand so it was really fun i hope you enjoy this episode where we turned the tables also if you are somebody who wants to lead your industry if you are feeling like you are not quite serving at the highest level yet, you need to refine your message. You need to develop your thought leadership platform. You want to be on bigger stages, whether that stage is on you know, a podcast that you love, on speaking at a conference, getting invited to telesummits, whatever it is that you want to get your message out more powerfully, more clearly, and be seen as a leader in your industry, then I really want to encourage you to check out my website and go to the consulting tab. It's heatherpodoska.com in the consulting tab to check out some of my services for potential leaders, for entrepreneurs who really want that next level of success and you know that you need refinement in your message, you might need polish of your image. If you want to be seen as a leader, you need to look the part. And if you need help developing a profit strategy. How are you going to create the kind of business model that's going to support your profit goals when you're speaking, when you're stepping out as the leader so that you're not just becoming popular without making profits at the same time? If that's you, if you want to speak on conferences, I had a comp uh, client this year who we started working together a month after we started working together, she got invited to speak at a national health conference. And I had another client, we developed her signature program. She was invited to a radio show and she launched her program right then and there. And it's just been this really great year of working with people who are stepping up their game. So if you're ready to step up your game, I invite you to check out the consulting tab on my website, or you can email me directly at heather at clearvoicebranding.com. Now on to the show. I hope you enjoy this episode of Thrive. 
Hi everyone, I'm Heather Podoska, founder of the Brand Star Academy, where I teach entrepreneurs how to be powerful, profitable speakers and create their own celebrity personal brands. Welcome to Thrive, the show where I bring you tips, resources, and people to help you create a more abundant life and business. You're in for high value content coming to you from industry leaders who are growing their business, making an impact, and rocking their brands. And today is a very, very special episode, well, I don't know if it's that special, but a very <laughs> special episode of Thrive because we're going to do a little experiment today and turn the tables. I have my very special friend and guest here, Kim Miles of, Kim, of Miles and Heels Productions, your go-to premier event strategist and creative collaborator. You got and it. we are going to be creatively collaborating today and she's going to turn the tables and interview me because I'm the one that's always interviewing people and I wondered if maybe some of the audience was like, well, who is Heather? What does she do? I see her up there and she's always interviewing other people. So we thought we would turn it around today and just do a little switcheroonie and um, and I'm so excited to have Kim here. I'm so excited you asked me. This is a little bit like an anniversary thing because I think we were here, it might have almost been three years ago or two years ago. Maybe two years. Yeah, two, two years ago yeah. when I think I was your, was I your first, I think I was your first interview? Kim, you were my first. <laughs> I, feel so, I feel so honored. Okay, first or second, I don't remember. One of yeah, the two. One but of the very two. early on. Yes. And so I, what I have to crack up at is that there are people who come up to me and they say, oh, I saw you on WinCam the other day. I saw you on the, on the cable station. And so I, the fact that you asked me to do this for you, I was really just tickled to do it. It's my sincere pleasure to be with you today. Well, and I was like, seriously, who would be the best at interviewing me? You know, I'm usually the person interviewing yeah. you. This is what you do in Kim Miles and Miles and Heels production. Yeah, all right. the time. And you know, it really is a skill set and you've learned that because you've been sitting in my seat and I think what people don't realize out there in the world is that it takes a real conversational sort of strategic conversational way to be able to get out the best of an interview guest and to make sure that they're really rocking their personal brand on camera, right. as you always talk about. And so, yeah, we're gonna dive right in. So I've, I've got my list of questions, I'm ready to go. Well, and also yeah. I have to say one other thing, I wanted it to be really fun because sometimes, sometimes you know, the guests are more serious, which yep. is the content is serious. Yep. So, um, but uh, I, <laughs> I wanted it to be more- Middle right. name, kid. Middle name I knew is that. fun. What is, what, is, what is the tagline that you have? That if you were the oh, I always say if Oprah and Ellen had a love child, it would be me. I mean, <laughs> I, I think you know. And the, here's a little story. So, for people who you know will learn or do understand what it is that you do, when I met with you, this is going back now four years wow. ago. Wow, wow, wow. Four years ago yeah. or more. Wow. When I sat in in your office and we were having my one of my very first strategy sessions mm -hmm. about my brand, I think in the first three minutes of us talking, when you literally said to me, Kim. How would, you how would you describe yourself? I mean, how would you really want people to describe you when you're not in the room, which is what the definition of brand is, right? Right, right. right. And I just looked at you and very plainly said, if Oprah and Ellen had a love child, it would be me. And you looked at me and you said, we're done here. And I said, <laughs> okay, well, I'm glad I needed you. I guess I didn't need you at all, though. No. But we, we, we had such a good time and I learned so much. And that, that's what you do for people every day is help identify their brands. But I want from the horse's mouth, I want to learn exactly what it is that you do. Well, I think that your story was a really good example of it. And it's really helping people understand themselves yes. and what they bring to the market and who they are and how they want all of those pieces of their personality, their value, their business, their positioning, all of that to come together in a unique representation of who they are, of their business, of how they want to show up so that they can attract people that get them, that will pay their fees and be their loyal clients for for years to come. Brand Branding mm -hmm. seems to be so nebulous, which I, I mean, I don't know if it's because we're entrepreneurs and we live and breathe that every day that we're just so kind of dialed into branding. Yeah. Um, but it's so critical, you know, it's so hypercritical in mm -hmm. a way. And you always are talking about you know, really zipping up your brand and, mm -hmm. and really bringing all those components together so that it's a real consistent, tight message. Right. And I think one of the biggest things that you always talk about, which I know I always talk about, and you and I, and on our car rides to many fun networking events yes. together. Yes, in the minivan. In the minivan, yes. minivan moments. Yes. Um, talking about your differentiator yeah. as brands, right? Yeah. So talk a little bit about what differentiates you as a brand strategist 
or star maker um, from other brand strategists out there? Well, I think it's true for everybody. Like, first of all, there are a million brand strategists, there are a million business coaches, but there is only one of you and you alone have your story. Mm -hmm. And the story of who you are is unique a unique fingerprint. So that first and foremost is, you know, even if you're offering the exact same services, right. your life's journey, the way that you became who you are is the unique differentiator. Yep. So for me, my path was not, I mean, I, if anybody's been watching for any length of time, they know that I was a singer. And my... Not just a singer, a pretty extraordinary oh, singer. Well, thank you. But <laughs> when I was five years old, I wasn't <laughs> quite at the level. But I was always a musician first. Mm -hmm. Always a musician first and I always tell the story one of my earliest conscious memories is of sitting on the corner waiting for someone to come over to play and I was singing and making up songs I'm sure you did the same thing when you were a kid but I have a very clear distinct memory of thinking I hope someone walks by and hears me and discovers me oh wow yes and that word discover right yeah because I think it's a very um, uh, human thing to want to be seen to want to have your talent recognized. Or want to have your value or your talents un uncovered, discovered, and to uncover your own abilities, right? To be able to uncover your own talents. Yes, yeah. but also to have it recognized by other people. Absolutely. To have, say, you're sp I see you. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's very human. I see you. Right. I think you're special. I choose you. Right. Right? And so that that I remember having that feeling, and it was before, like, America's Got Talent. It was like when the gong show was <laughs> Right? Honey, you just dated yourself. <laughs> I know, but it was not part of like everyday culture. It right. was just organic. So everybody goes about that in different ways. Yeah. You know, some people are athletes and they go on into business. And I went on to be a singer. I did all the things that musical kids do mm -hmm. and um, was in competitions. I was teaching piano lessons in high school. And it was very much part of your identity. It was who I was, right. right? I mean, I was a singer before I was a mom or an entrepreneur or a wife. I was a musician from from five. I mean, I started And in, in all of your messaging, I feel that what you have really uniquely embraced is the fact that your whole performance strategy, your whole performance ability is what you are helping instill in others that may not be completely innate in those people, right? Mm. You and I have an innate and uncanny ability to be performers. We grew up performing. Mm -hmm. We like to perform, mm -hmm. we're comfortable performing, we're comfortable being in front of audiences. Mm -hmm. But for those who aren't, I think that you have a really wonderful gift of kind of bringing that out in people. Mm -hmm. And it really leads me to my next question, which is why do you do what it is that you do? Yeah, so just to take that story even further, as I, as I went on my musical journey, I want, I went to, I've never seen an opera before. In my senior year of high school, I won a congressional scholarship to study in Europe for the oh, year. Wow. And my, I wanted to keep singing, so I found a voice teacher there, and, and he said, he was a touring American opera singer who was working in Germany, and he said, go see an opera. And I'm like, I grew up across the street from cows. I, <laughs> I didn't know anything. Can't help you. No, 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 I had never seen one. So I said, if I get a chance, I'll go. And I got a chance to go to Berlin, and I went in this beautiful theater, and... What was the opera that you saw? Well, the conductor comes out da -dun -dun -da -de -da -da. it was la bohème oh my god so my first opera i'm in this huge theater in berlin in la bohème the like puccini's most famous that's like the not even the penultimate it's the ultimate yeah i mean yeah. you know butterfly maybe you know like right. one of the top ones and the soprano came out and at the end they threw flowers at her feet and that like for my little five-year-old girl that was like i hope someone discovers me was like a drug that I'm, crystallized it i was like you. i want that yeah I, I want i'll take those so i went back to the states and i went to the conservatory and suddenly i was not this big fish in a little pond of like you know doing all the, the leads and mm -hmm. i was at the conservatory with all the best musicians in the world and i started to develop this body tension and it cut off my technique. So I would go and sing like for a conductor or a teacher that knew me well. And I always tell this story, I don't know if you saw the Looney Tunes, the cartoon where the guy <laughs> finds the singing frog. And he, yes. yes, right, he finds the singing frog. He take, and he's like, hello, my baby. Yes. Like, so he gets the frog. <laughs> Sorry, I just had a visual for everybody out there. Yeah, so, so he gets, you know, he gets the frog, puts him in the box. He's like, I'm gonna be a millionaire. So he goes to Broadway. He's like, the, the frog is gonna sing. So he takes it to the producers, puts the box out. The frog jumps out and goes, ribbit. ribbit. Yeah. And he's like, no, 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 sing, sing, sing. And he's like, ribbit. Puts the frog back in the box, takes him back home, opens the box, and the frog jumps out and is like, hello, my baby. 
that was me. So I would be like comfortable, I'd be at my lessons, people who knew me would hear the voice come out and they'd be like, yeah, you got it, go for it. And then I would get in these situations where I felt competition, I felt insecure, and my body would just shut down. And it wasn't really just, it wasn't stage fright. It wasn't just purely stage fright. It was more, it sounded much more kind of ingrained or mental or there was like a whole bunch of factors it sounded like to me. Oh, totally. Yeah. Totally. Like, you know, self-worth, yeah. all of these things that got like, like caught up in Combined, here. yeah. And at Kim, I did everything I could think of to overcome this tension. I went to New York and I studied with a breathing specialist, a doctor who worked with emphysema patients. Wow. I did Alexander lessons, which is basically posture lessons every week for three years. I went and learned. All we did was stand up and sit down in a chair for an hour. <laughs> like, how much did that cost you? <laughs> <Yeah>. Well, <laughs> Let me tell you. Honey, I could teach you how to stand up and sit down. Yeah. You can write the check to me. But I was <laughs> desperate. This was my dream. Yeah, I wanted to be at the Met. And right. I knew I had the vocal cords. Sure, of course. But my, like, this, this Nothing was, else was cooperating. Right. So, but because I worked hard and I, I was talented and I'm a talented musician, I have a voice and people knew me, I got some things and I ended up at the Boston Lyric Opera. And I was in the professional ensemble there and I thought this was going to be a stepping stone. And I did some touring, but five years later, I'm still in the chorus. And I'll never forget this. I was staged for um, Magic Flute. Mm -hmm. I was staged at the front of the stage with my back to the audience. I was seating on the, seated on the floor, seated on the floor. The orchestra was playing. The house was full at the Schubert Theater downtown Boston. And the lead soprano, Pamina, was staged in front of me. And she was singing over the top of my head. And I just looked at her in this, and I was like, I am done. This is not what I signed up for to watch someone else live my dream while I'm sitting here with my back to the audience, invisible, after trying and spending so much money, time, tears, energy. In trying. years. Oh my God, it was my whole life. Yeah. So I didn't know what I was gonna do after that. I had been a singer, a musician my entire life. That was your identity. It was everything. So I went to a career counselor because I was like, I must, there must be something else. And we found out about branding. And I was like, okay. I can check these boxes because right. branding is about helping people find their voice. That's right. And like, I, I when you ask my, you, I'm gonna I'm gonna get emotional because you ask my differentiator. I know what that feels like not to have your voice, to know that there's something in literally there. and metaphoric. Totally. Yeah. Like to know that you have talent, to know you have something to give, that there's something there and you cannot get it out. You can't get people to see it. You can't communicate it. So that's. I mean, that's the foundation. So helping people find their voice, find their niche, which is the same as finding your repertoire as a singer. Absolutely. Dressing the part that you're trying to play. Like, how do you look online? What does your website look like? What does your social media profile look like? How are you dressing? How Consistency are... in your brand. Yeah. Yep. So all of those things were the same thing I was doing as a singer. It was just applied to business. What I think I love, you know, about what you talk about and what you and I have talked about so often as friends and colleagues and you know, support, we've been a support system for one another as entrepreneurs for many years. I think the thing that's interesting about you and me is that it's not like you and I went to business school and had a fancy business plan and we woke up one day and said, okay, now I'm going to execute this business plan. Mm -hmm. You and I literally used our experiences and our life stories and our highs and lows in life to be able to lead us to what our true calling is mm -hmm. and that's what you're trying to do f for other people and I think that that's so important and I think that for people who really struggle you know with what their brand is you know it to us it's such an easy question why is personal brand so important it's so easy for us to say you know to be able to answer that question very succinctly but for those who struggle with it you know talk about there's professional brands you know, very easily identifiable. You know, if you take Nike or Coca-Cola mm -hmm. or CoverGirl, you know, mm -hmm. you can immediately identify what those brands are. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to somebody's personal brand that they're then trying to perhaps bridge into a pr professional and personal brand, talk a little bit about why that's so important. Well, first of all, everybody already has a brand. They already have a personal brand. If you are living and breathing, you already have a brand. It's right. Because it's everything you're projecting out into and the world. And can that change over time? I mean, obviously, you could start off potentially with one brand being one type of flavor or tone and maybe it morphs into something else as you evolve and mature as a person and a, and a professional? I would say if it doesn't change, you're not growing. Right. 
You know, I always think of your brand as a moving line. And when you brand yourself, it's, it's like a snapshot of where you are on that line. But that line, hopefully, is still moving and spiraling That's up. evolution. Right. 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 So, and I mean, there, but your brand is your reputation. It's the promise of what you can deliver. Oh, right? I like that very much. Yeah. So it's something that's held in the minds of your audience. But the reason we brand is to have some control and to have some intention around what that impression is. So if I, if I am not attracting the right kinds of clients, if I am not having the kind of success that I want to have, I can take some responsibility for that and project something different, as long as it's authentic. Mm -hmm. And then you can have also some aspiration around your brand. Because like we said, you already have a brand. It's everything you've done up to this point. Well, if you're not where you want to be right now, mm -hmm. and you want to be there, mm -hmm. how do you need to show up to get there? From point A to point B. So that people right. see you as that potential or see you there already. And right. that sometimes, sometimes that's an internal external thing and sometimes it's an external internal thing like dressing the part. Like if you show up and you look like, you know, a schlumpadink as Oprah likes to say, you're probably not going to command the high fees. Yeah. But if you show up and you have respect for yourself, and I'm not saying everybody, not all brands need to be fancy. That's not what I mean. Well, that's an interesting point because there was a, a recent post on a, on a group that I belong to, a business group the other mm -hmm. day, that came across and everybody weighs in and it just, it, 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 it incites interesting conversation. Some I pay attention to, some are more interesting than others. But somebody said, um, do you feel that it's important for women to wear makeup in order to appear professional? And I was floored by all the different responses that came out. And I think what you just said is very interesting, which is it depends on what you do for a living, Absolutely. right? I mean, if you're a fresh-faced farm girl, I don't think you're gonna be showing up in glam like you or I are gonna be showing up in, right? Your brand is all about being natural and potentially, you know, homeopathic or whatever it is, right. right? So I think that that's a very interesting conversation, but the responses were really interesting. I think what is at the core of that question more so is about what makes you feel your true authentic self, totally. which is what you talk about all the time. Yeah. And speaking of that, I, I do want to pivot one, one moment to you telling us really two things. A, who your ideal client is, mm -hmm. but B, what are the results that you strive to get for your clients? So I want to know who the ideal client is, and then you just talked about a promise and delivering on that promise. Yep. So what is it that you're saying to these people this is what my this is what I'm all about. This is what I can draw out of you. What are the things that you're promising that you can deliver for that client? So first of all, yeah, absolutely. And it is about I want to just back up to the authenticity. Authentic self, yeah. It's about who you are, how you want to show up in your industry, right? Like yep. it, it, so it's not about being fancy, but it's always showing up as the best version, version. of that. Yes. Of that. So Which is the, applicable within that space. Absolutely. absolutely. If you're the fresh faced farm girl then show up as the best version of that. Right. It's not sloppiness. Exactly. It's being authentic. So, but my ideal clients are people who really want that next level. They want to be in the spotlight. They want to have um, a platform to share, like be on television, be in the media. I always say that I um, help people become powerful, profitable speakers and that I'm on stage, you know, like how do you present in a way that people will hire you to do the gig? Because if you're not visible, I always say you don't get paid to sing in the shower unless you're really comfortable singing naked, right? I enjoy singing in the shower. Well, do you enjoy having other people come in your shower? <laughs> that's a private question, Heather. <laughs> well, but that's my point. It's about that visibility. Yes. Because if, if, you're, if you're not being successful, you're either not on message or you don't have a big enough audience. Mm -hmm. Those, there's no in between because if you have a clear message and you're not converting people. Shouldn't be an issue. Right, you, exactly. You, you're not in front of the right, right. people. Yeah. And if you're in front of the right people and you're not converting, your message isn't clear. I also just interrupt you for one second because I think that you and I talk about this all the time. Yeah. I think that you and I as entrepreneurs, what's fun about us is as we go through this process and this journey together, mm. we, we often come back to each other and we say, okay, guess what, Kim? I've learned something that I don't want to do anymore, mm -hmm. or I've learned about people with whom I'm not interested in engaging anymore yep. from a clientele perspective. I think you and I have had several conversations like that, and mm -hmm. I think learning about what you do love to do and what you don't love to do is equally as important in this space mm -hmm. because I think that the energy that you put out there is going to be the kind of energy that you attract back. Mm -hmm. So when you're putting out working with 
highly successful clients, people who are really equally motivated to be their best self, you're going to attract those types of clients. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Yeah. As opposed, and, and that's part of you having a consistent brand. You know, you, you're describing yourself as a star maker, which I want to ask you how you came up with that in a second. But, yeah. you know, I think it's you're putting out that kind of attraction. That's the kind of people you're getting. People are really eager to become the best version of themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of my clients, are they have all the components. Mm -hmm. But they, it's just not zipped up yet. They don't have that hook mm -hmm. that, that turns heads. And it's that thing, it's that differentiator, it's that special thing mm -hmm. that people, like Miles and Heels Productions, mm -hmm. right? And you're like, you're the productions person, you're that personality, you're, you're the host and you can really do these great interviews. You're not doing 20 things. Mm -hmm. That's your hook, mm -hmm. right? You've got that and you've got the heels. Mm -hmm. it's, all, it's all aligned. So I have a client right now that I'm working with and she really started to get clear on what her hook is. And she went back to somebody she had worked with and then she just got invited to speak at a national conference nice right so she but she got the message clear she kind of got it all lined up another client of mine she got she was um, uh, calling herself one thing and uh, and we changed what that was and all of a sudden she started getting media attention you've been using that phrase you know zipping up your brand yeah since I've known you yeah which is a long time <laughs> and, <laughs> But in a good way. Yes. Um, not in an age way, in a longevity way. <laughs> That's right. Um, but talking about that concept has always stuck with me. Yeah. Because I think you're right. I think one of the problems that people have, which is what you just said, which is there are all these components mm -hmm. and they're all somehow separated, but you and I both know that they need to be brought together yeah. in a, in a com complete and consistent and comprehensive way. So I think that that zipping up metaphor is, it's gene, I think it's spot on, frankly. Thank you. Oh, I toyed with the idea of calling myself the brand zipper, but I don't think anybody would know <laughs> no, what no, that is. No, no, no. Star Maker's better. Talk to me about how you came to Star Maker. Well, I love seeing people like in that spot where they're on the precipice, right? They're right at that yep. spot where they have all these pieces and they really just need to zip it up. They need that hook. They might need an image piece to so that they look like a star. Yep. But celebrity is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. You use it just like you use money. You can be a jerk with or without money. Mm -hmm. You can be a jerk with or without celebrity, but celebrity is power and influence. And some people abuse that power and some people are using their platform for great things and some people aren't. Yeah. Some people are, are becoming a celebrity or becoming famous for absolutely nothing. But that's a flash in the pan, right? right? Like right. having substance. And most people that I work with, they have a point of view. They want something greater. They're trying to share a powerful message. Right. Like one of my clients right now is an abuse prevention expert. Wow. Right? And how relevant. Very topical. Right. That's a huge message that yeah. needs to get out in a big way. Yeah. So how are we going to bring that together so when this person goes out, people are like, yes. How often do you meet with somebody and you're, you're sitting there listening to them and, and internally your monologue is saying, oh, sweetheart, you are so off base on your own brand. Like, how many times does that happen? That they're completely on the opposite end of the spectrum of what they think their brand is and what really their brand is. Does that happen very often? I don't think so. I think no. most people kind of know. I think what happens more often is, and this is why I like Star Maker, because it's all of the pieces. And as you know, this is the, where the performance piece comes in. Mm -hmm. It's not just the message. It's not just the visibility, it's the look, mm -hmm. it's the hook. Mm -hmm. What is that hook that's gonna turn? It's all of those pieces and then presenting it and showing up as the star. The total package. Yeah, I'm here, baby. I, this is it. Yeah. And owning that and being able to go into the marketplace so people are like, book her. Well, you and I talk about something else also that I think that, that we have, we've kind of chuckled over the years about. People, it's important to stay true to your message, right? Yep. And not to stay in your lane so much, but you know, don't try to be an expert at 20 things. Be an expert at what you're great at, right? Yep. Then you and I have this conversation about different people who are sort of all over the map. And, and you know, I, I say to you, I'm like, oh my God, look what he's doing now, or look mm -hmm. what she's trying to do now. It seems so far afield. What's the difference between going too far afield and outside of your brand lane and just being exploratory and trying new things? This is such a great question because- <laughs> Honey, it's why I do what I do. <laughs> uh. Because I've, I've sort of changed, I, I sort of have different feelings about it. Than when, before I was like, you must be in right. this lane. Right. But you are the brand, I am the brand, and how we express what we wanna do 
is part of that. Mm -hmm. So it's choices. And I think, like, I like to think about it more as flowing into an area and flowing out and mm -hmm. testing things. But I think as long as you are on message, on point, and how you're delivering that, and you can play with that. So for example, one of the things I've done recently was I shot a rap video. I'm a queen on the scene. I'm a Boston bean. I come from cheese land, yo, but I'm really mean. I sing opera. What? Yes. How did I not know this? Well, because it's something that I've been working on. When is the premiere? Well, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I've got it. It's all in the can. It's all done. I did it. But it's a part of who I am. It's a part of that performance piece and about like kind of getting in like an edgier side. But yep. it's still part of who I am. Mm -hmm. it may, you know, it's part of the brand. It's part of the message of be yourself, mm -hmm. be authentic. So some people could say, that is not on brand for you. Mm -hmm. And I could say, I don't care what you think. <laughs> Girl. No, because it you are in command of your brand. Right. And so but I do think I think what is important is not necessarily going off brand, but having a gateway drug to your services. Hmm. So play over here, play over here, but know that ninety nine point nine percent of your clients are gonna come to you for one thing. Well, here's a good example. I, I tell me if you think that this kind of encompasses what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, I'm a singer too, as you yeah. well know. We're two different types of singers. Um, I'm more in the kind of poppy country-ish area, mm -hmm. um, and Broadway musicals are my 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 total, you know, guilty and, pleasure. Um, and your but, great band, and my great band, yes, which I have so much fun with. But um, my husband and I were talking the other day about Garth Brooks, uh -huh. who I'm not. I'm I am not personally a Garth Brooks fan, but he's one of the most successful country music artist of all time, for sure. Does everybody remember when when he had an alter ego that came out? It was a total. Oh, I sort of remember? remember. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Remember, I forget what yeah. it was called, and it 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 failed miserably. Mm. So what's interesting about that analogy or that story is like sometimes it doesn't always work, right? right. Like sometimes people are not going to follow you into right. that other lane. And you know, if your brand is strong enough and you kind of come back to your original lane, people will hopefully follow you back. Tell me about what you think most entrepreneurs struggle with the most. I think it's really knowing what that lane is. Mm -hmm. I, because I always liken it to, you know, when you, you get your car worked on mm -hmm. and they put those little blocks under the tire mm -hmm. so, so it, it doesn't roll, move. Yeah. right? When you're clear on your message and your niche and what your superpowers are and what people are really going to come to you for, mm -hmm. it's like just taking that little block away and then the car can roll down the road. Mm -hmm. But most people don't know. They don't know how to articulate it. They don't know how to walk into a room and say, this is what I do, for whom, these are the results that they get. Like, I help people with their messaging and their branding and their image and their performance so that they can get in the media and make more money and create streamlined business models and have a hook in the market. Mm -hmm. So they're stars. Do you want to know what I think also feeds into that? What's that? People not understanding how to say no. Mm, yeah. Right? So mm -hmm. when you're starting off as an entrepreneur, you know, you're just so eager to get clients or get a gig and you'll say yes to almost anything. Yeah. And as you go forward, you have to really learn that saying no is a very healthy thing because not all opportunities are going to reemphasize or reinforce your brand and your message mm -hmm. and how you want to be seen out there. So I think what also feeds into that is not really understanding how or when to say no. Would you agree with that? Yeah, and I think that also, I, I like to come from a loving place around all of it as well. And I've definitely softened over the years about like lanes should because we're people and we're people are messy mm -hmm. people are sloppy we're people, not perfect no and we we have different facets of our personality and because of our emotional uh, maturity because of our life path sometimes there are parts of our personality that that are trying desperately to be expressed and they're coming out maybe garth brooks is trying to express something and he couldn't figure out how to bring it into his current brand mm -hmm. so it came out like this and he's mm -hmm. like okay that's not working for my business brand mm -hmm. right so i need to like so i i agree like saying no but i also i want to give people the space to play and be like okay this didn't work it's not the end of the world mm -hmm. what's the next thing you can't be afraid to fail right you can't be afraid to fail as an entrepreneur or as a, just a person in general yeah. you can't yeah. be afraid to fail but why do you feel that personal brand and professional branding plays such a huge impact in people's ability to perform, ergo, to be able to succeed and make money. I think it's everything. Yeah. 
my my tag if I had a tagline on my forehead it would be when you have your voice you have everything you need wow drop think, the mic I think you could, thank you I'm I, gonna leave now I think you could tattoo that on your <laughs> on your forehead no but I think that that's that's so huge and do you think women struggle with that more so than men I don't I don't know if they, you know I think some ways women have an advantage because they tend to be tend to be more emotionally available mm -hmm. Not always, but then, and they're given a little more space, I think, mm -hmm. to, to explore their emotions and explore creativity. Not all, I mean, I'm just broad strokes here. Mm -hmm. um, where I think it's harder for women is when they have a powerful voice, mm -hmm. when they have a strong voice, mm -hmm. and they want to express that because it's not just men that say, shh, it is not just men. That's right. There are plenty of women who will help you quiet down. Do you think that that comes out of insecurity from those women kind of looking at those other women somewhat in an enviable capacity and saying, I wish I could be as forthcoming with my voice and my opinions? Do you think that's what that's coming from? I would say 100% of the time, if someone is being critical of you, it's about them. I probably, yeah. It's all about them. It yeah. has, it's their perception, their feeling about themselves, yeah. and it's getting projected onto you. Yeah. That's why I said, what a friend of mine has this phrase, which I love. What you think about me is none of my business. Hmm. It's, I, That's do, all about you. Right? Yeah. Like, it, put your blinders on and do your thing. Yeah. And see if it makes you feel good. See if it's making you money. See if people are responding to it. Do you think that it. that comes with age, though, and maturity? Because oh. when you're younger, that's a lot harder to put those blinders on. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. But, right. it, you know, it's just a, it's a life path thing, and I'm not perfect at it. It's just something that you have to... But it's, it is the way, like... Be authentic, be yourself. And the more true you are to yourself, the more people are electrified by that. You know, if someone has a strong personality, you either like it or you don't like yes, it. Yes, that's true. You know, I always say, like, branding is not a popularity contest. It's not to try to get everybody to like you. That's mm -hmm. not what it's about. That's right. It's about being who you are, showing up with the value that you have, and drawing your people to you. That's why there's 31 flavors at Baskin Robbins. That's right. That's I right. always say that. I say, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. I mean, I'm most people's cup of tea, but I'm not everybody's <laughs> cup of tea. Right. And that is okay with me. Yeah. Because I think that you have to find your tribe, you have to find your peeps. And do you have more female clients than male clients? You do? I do. Yeah. Yeah. And do you think that that's because you enjoy working with females more so, or that you just are attracting more women who are looking to, you know, kind of authenticate their voice? I think it's, I think it's a little bit of both, but I think that it's, a little bit of human nature that men tend to work with men and women tend to work with women. I mean, there are certainly crossover sure. people, but I think that's... Um, tell, tell us one thing that, that the audience would be really surprised to know about you. Today. Oh, I think I already said it. <laughs> the rap video? The rap video. <laughs> that she's like a closeted rapper? Uh-huh. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to be closeted not for much longer. No. So when do we get to see this video? When, I, when's the, tell us a little well, sneak tease. What's, let's close out with a tease. Oh, I don't care what you think. I don't care what you say. I don't care how you walk because I got my own way. Well, mm. I don't think, as Barbara Walters <laughs> used to say, there's your ending. I think you probably would have to close on that. I think that that is a great way to close. Thank you so much. I had this a great so time. much fun. I had a great time. It's, you know, it's been really fun for us to go on this journey together. Yeah, yeah. To watch you succeed. Well, to and you as well. be able to have you as a sounding board. Thank you. Um, I feel really grateful to you. I've learned a lot from you. And I always know that you have my back. Oh, totally. And I hope you know that I always have yours. I do. So yeah. you are putting out great things into the world. Thank and you. may only great things continue to come to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And as always, thank you all for joining us as well. And until next time, here's to hitting all your high notes. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Hi everyone, it's Heather again. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Thrive. Every week we try to bring you people and information to help you change your life for the better, to grow your business, to expand your thinking, and to open your heart. If you did enjoy this content, I would so appreciate it if you would go to iTunes and review us. Let us know how we're doing. We'd love to hear your thoughts and your feedback. And if you found this information helpful or useful in any way, please share it on out. Let your friends and family know know about Thrive. And finally, if you'd like to know more about me, you can visit me at heatherpaduska.com. Until next time, here's to hitting all your high notes.